Hi, this is James Governor from Redmonk, and we're here to uh, bring you another moderated screencast, this time sponsored by RightScale. Um, so what are we doing here? The idea is that we're going to take you through a few slides, tell you a bit about the RightScale corporate strategy, and then go into a demo and kind of drill into that and get a clearer sense of, of their new portfolio products and what they're moving forward with. Uh, so to take us uh, uh, through this uh, event today, we have, have Hassan Hosseini. Uh, hi, Hassan. And um, I'm going to turn it straight over to you. Take us through. Uh, so tell us more about being the what you call yourselves the cloud management experts. Sure. Yeah. So a little introduction about myself. I I am the co-founder of Plan for Cloud, which was acquired by RightScale just over a year ago now. And RightScale as a whole, what we do, um, we've been in this area for about seven years. I guess since the birth of the cloud, when it was just Amazon Web Services and EC2. Now we've kind of rapidly grown and we're in the space where we support 10 clouds, um, public and private, so OpenStack, CloudStack, things like that. Okay. Um, over 6 million, I think it's the figures about 6 million now, servers launched through the RightScale cloud management platform. Um, per scaling event, we have about 10,000 uh, servers launched up. So we're kind of in the bigger space of enterprises and cloud management using RightScale to manage all the resources. Um, so I guess a quick introduction to what I'm going to talk to you about today, RightScale has, until now has been known as cloud management, so mm -hmm. configuration, provisioning, automation, so forth. And something I'm really interested in, really excited to show you about is, is the cloud analytics piece. So we've been working on this for a little while, and I'll jump into a demo and I'll show you exactly what it is, but RightScale becomes this cloud portfolio management suite. So we've got the cloud management, we've got cloud analytics, and one thing to note is they're on, they run on this multi-cloud platform. So okay. straight out the box, private and uh, public clouds are supported. Okay, one thing I did want to ask you about. Um, so, you know, this cloud analytics and this came, you know, that's, I guess, why they, they, they acquired the firm, um, Plan for Cloud. Um, what, what, what exactly is happening here? Because the first wave was about automation, was about configuration, provisioning, and so on. Why is it so much about spend now? Why, I mean, apart from the fact that we're understanding that we're spending a lot of money on this, what, what, what is the transition that means we need this kind of stuff around uh, analytics to truly understand our cloud, uh, what we're spending on the cloud? Great question. So what we've seen with more and more larger enterprises coming on board and starting to use their use the cloud, um, we see that they really need to plan up front, um, you know, a forecast of three years, look at how much it's actually going to cost, and we'll come to cloud with a strategy, rather than what we had in the startup areas, where they would just launch stuff and see what would happen. Um, with that, we have enterprise management who really need visibility into, okay, we want to adopt the cloud, we start using the cloud, but we really need visibility in what's actually happening, and feed that visibility all the way back, um, you know, analyzing that information and optimizing that information. So with larger enterprises, you, they really need visibility into what's going on, as well as planning and optimizing. So what? Capacity planning is back, eh? It is, it is back, yeah. So cost management, capacity planning, both for private and public cloud. And I guess I've, I've highlighted that slightly in, in the next slide. So with that portfolio, it's not just one application anymore. It's your central IT. It's multiple applications on different clouds. So, you know, the deployment after you deploy, managing, analyzing, optimizing. And that's the entire circle of cloud portfolio management that you really need to adopt the cloud and become better as an enterprise. You've, you've probably seen some other um, players in this area of the cloud analytics area. And I kind of one slide to show you why, how we are different from those guys. So what's really unique about cloud analytics. First up, out the box, we are multi-cloud, public and private. So through a single place, you're seeing both your usage and your cost for public and private costs, um, clouds. With some other players, there's one, usually Amazon Web Services, and one other cloud provider or two other cloud providers, infrastructure as a service. The second part is history and forecast. So we, although you can look at your history, if you run up a bill on a cloud provider, you're going to have to pay that up. Um, so it's about understanding that history and forecasting going forward to see what optimizations you should be making and how much you can really save if you do some of these optimizations. Um, so that's the forecast part. I'll show you some of the extensive slice and dice. I'll give you a live demo. Great. And, um, finally, is the integrated with cloud management. So bringing that loop and closing it all the way back. With a lot of these um, applications currently, they'll tell you some recommendations and give you some help with analyzing your history, but it just stops there. You have to make the next step. With uh, 
into with cloud management on our back end, we actually can make then the circle close up and you can take action from there. And we're just starting to scratch the surface with this. Okay. From a market perspective, I mean, I think for me, what I find interesting is just the number of third parties that Amazon is supporting in this area. That, you know, that the, 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 the proof of its, its role in the ecosystem, I think, is that there are, you know, a few companies going after this space. Um, and, and clearly you're looking for differentiation and, and delivering value there. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, have a look at what your tool can do. So Cloud Analytics as a whole, so what you're seeing just now on the screen is the top chart is showing you the usage in terms of instance count and also cost as well. And what we're seeing is, you know, it's, it's important to see those both on the same graph mm -hmm. because you could get to a point where here, the number of servers we're running is slightly decreasing relatively, but the cost is actually dropping quite a bit. And that's because people are swapping out bigger servers for smaller servers and so on. Okay, so that explains that delta, that makes sense. Exactly, and so you know the standard date train selector, we can switch to look at weekly and see um, the data per week to see if there's a trend or, or go back to daily. And also minimum and maximum number of servers as well. So within a given day, for example, here, we have some kind of scaling up and down. So really getting all this information on a single graph helps a lot with this visualization of your instances. Okay. And if we scroll down a little bit further is our, our total costs, um, lowest average and highest instance counts, and our current run rate. How are we comparing to that? Your applications, uh, three scalable three-tier web app, how much, how many instances, and how's that changing over time? Just okay. Spark that. Um, you know, top five instance types in cloud. So with the clouds, it's actually really interesting because if you have a disaster recovery scenario, you'll see one cloud to drop off suddenly. And if you have your disaster recovery set in place, it'll actually start the other cloud will start picking back up and going. Um, so yeah, that's a really quick uh, run through of the dashboard and how that's changed. How well, I'm, uh, I'm interested in hearing a bit more about the predictive side because I'm immediately like, ah, so yeah. what if you did this? What if we used a different cloud instead? Or what? I'm looking forward to, to seeing more about that. Exactly. So let's get into that with, through the analyze page. So cool. the analyze page is where we can start to slice and dice all of our usage. Mm -hmm. So we've got the factors that we have here, accounts, deployments, clouds, instance types, all the way down to who actually provisioned some resources. So what I can do is open these up and I can see you know, cloud vendors, who am I using, deployments, instance types, and so on. And at any one of these I can tick on, uh, I can see how that's exactly being used exactly. So I can tick M1 large, and all my view is now updated with M1 large in Amazon. How is that getting used? And once we have done that kind of analysis, we actually can then go into the instance details. So we can actually see all the way down to instance IDs okay. of what these instances are. And that's the where that we can start to take action. We've done our visibility, we've done our analysis, we've seen the instances, but you know what? Now let's take that and go forward. What what actually happens next? Okay. And that's where we start to build in parts of plan for that. So it's a scenario. So let's build a scenario on top of this. So what we do is actually take all your usage of the last 12 months and we graph that for you. And that's this is on the left hand side. What we're seeing is our current our last years of usage. And on the right hand side, we've got a year one, year two, and year. So let's quickly save this as an RS demo. And what we have is now all of our usage and all of our instances that we're using. So from here, I can actually start to add any kind of growth patterns to forecast going forward. So usage could be stable, but often more than, more than not, we have two different kinds of patterns. We have ones which are temporary. So during a shopping season, anything like that, we have a peak and then it goes back to a normal. So patterns like this we can add and we can see exactly how it'll affect our usage and our costs. Okay. We also have another kind of pattern which says, okay, we're starting to ramp up applications, more and more users, and they are the permanent pattern. So adding 5% per month. And we can see how that's gonna change our costs going up, going forward. If you've seen, if you've looked at the plan for cloud, what we're, what we're starting to build, and you can see we're just starting to describe services, more and more of the forecasting, what would happen if we changed instance types? What would happen if we change uh, clouds? What right. would happen if we made purchase option decisions? 
all those things are being built into scenario Builder. And, and in fact, we, we have a lot of larger enterprises who did this kind of decision making. Um, with the larger enterprises, it's interesting because you really need to investigate how many reserved instances you want to commit to. And also, you would probably stagger the purchasing of these ins of these reserved instances because if you try to buy 2,000 instances of reserved instances up front, that upfront peak of costs might be just a bit too much. Mm -hmm. um, so you would start to stagger those um, purchase of options and approaches that way. And using Scenario Builder, you can see when should I budget for, for the next cost coming. So you're like, okay, that's what I'm going to... And you can you know visually see, okay, we've got these spikes coming up. Um, so it's around here that we need to be thinking about reserved instances. Have I understood? Exactly. So... Yeah, that's that's perfect. So in, in this point, we need to start looking at reserved instances, and also remember next year to even maintain your cost, you would have to buy the amount, the same amount of reserved instances. Right. So if you wanted to, you know, if you don't commit to that upfront anymore, you'll actually your cost overall cost might go up. Okay. So from here, you know, you've got the full details of year one, year two, and year three of the forecasts, and um, broken down by months, so and you can see how much and how many instances you're using at each one. And you can open these up and see uh, the details behind all these numbers as well. Okay, and can I see it by cloud? Is that, is that, is that on the... Uh... Yeah, so, so these, are the, these are the clouds that we're using here. Oh yeah, okay, I got it. Um, and you can, so we've come through this through the, through the analyze page. So in the analyze page, you can slice and dice, you know, say you're looking at an application. So you drill down to an application, you build a scenario on top of that application. And you can have one application talking to multiple components. So you could build a scenario which encompasses different components of one application as well, or team, anything like that. So with that, um, you know, from here, users can create their own custom patterns. Everyone's going to have a different, uh, different pattern mm -hmm. structure. So you can design both permanent and temporary patterns. Um, straight out the box, private and public cloud. So you can see all, all of our um, accounts and we can add different cloud providers. Um, oh, yeah, good. That was what I was going to ask about. OK, this is cool. Mm -hmm. From here, um, you you know, we've got we we support a host of a host of cloud providers just now, and you can add you know Amazon Web Services, Google, and so on, add to as many accounts as you like. So you can create accounts and add these cloud providers to get really across your portfolio of view across all these applications, all these accounts that you're using. Adding Google, you select an account mm -hmm. or you create another sub account, and th this is where you're starting to structure your organization of how it's laid out. So do you have accounts per department, per application? Is it just one account for the entire usage? Um, so you can use those to really dig in to a company's infrastructure okay. or, or organization. And from there, you actually share this tool, as you saw, it's really easy to use, with your CFO, CIO, um, you know, technical and business and financial managers. We're going to make those optimization decisions. It'll be interesting to see how the UIs change over time as the business people ask for more of their, like what they think they need, and then the developers ask more of what they need. Completely, completely. And as you saw with the Scenario Builder, for example, that uh, flexible UI of seeing exactly what's going to happen in a visual form is really important to the business managers and to the financial managers. So that, that was just a quick whistle tour of what's, for, what's coming up, and uh, I thought I'd show you and um, share it out there. Well, that's great. Thank you very much, Hassan. Uh, the one thing that does strike me quite clearly is we're going to have to have you to do this on a regular basis, because I could see white space, I could see some other functions that you're going to be filling out there. But um, but that said, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I know all organizations are trying to get their arms around their Amazon spend right now, and for your existing customers and others, yeah, this has to be uh, uh, this has to be quite welcome. So um, I guess this is the first big release of the plan for cloud, right, scale. This is the first release of Grayscale Cloud Analytics. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time today. And uh, let's keep it short and snappy. So thanks very much. And we'll talk and uh, see you again soon. Perfect. Thanks very much, James.